Yeah, judge not that ye be not judged, Matthew 7, 1. Because Jesus is talking to unbelievers. So they're not going to judge according to the spiritual. They're going to judge according to the physical because they don't have the love of God. I mean, look at God. I mean, th think about this world. Eight billion people. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If God judges us based on our flesh, there's no, there, there no way he would send Christ to die for our sins. No way. I mean, we look unsav unsavable. All in our flesh dwells no good thing. So why would he save us? Well, because he loves us. He loves us so much that he says, although man, with man it is impossible, with God all things are possible. And God says, I have the power to save these people. Not based on any merits, because um, they've constantly turned their back on me. I mean, if you had, if your own children behaved toward you in the way that we behave toward God in our sin nature, you would disown them. I, unless, unless, you know, in Christ you wouldn't. But uh, other, apart from Christ, there's no way. Because God has this unconditional love that he looks at 8 billion people. He sees every single one has rebelled. They've done absolutely nothing good. And yet he, he says, I'm going to save them. It's because he loves us. So he commends his love toward us. So the moment we believe the gospel, we receive God's love. And so then 2 Corinthians 5, verse 14, 2 Corinthians 5, 14 says, the love of Christ constraineth us. So now that we've got God's love, what God's love does is we, if we operate by God's love, it provides a constraint. A constraint is I'm going in that direction. You know, I, I can't go over here. I can't go over there. I, I'm constrained by the love of Christ. And the constraint is how I'm thinking. I'm going to think according to the love of Christ. That we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore, because the love of Christ is given unto us when we believe the gospel, and it's constrained us. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. So the way that you do that is you say, I'm not judging. I'm not saying, oh, you're homosexual, you're bound for hell. Oh, I see you're an alcoholic, you're bound for hell. And the way that I don't do that is I judge them by the love of Christ. And the love of Christ is we're all dead. So, yeah, the homosexual is bound for hell, but guess what? The heterosexual is bound for hell. The alcoholic's bound for hell, but guess what? The guy who's never taken a drink in his life is bound for hell. Uh, we're all bound for hell. And Christ died for my sins, and I understand that. I was bound for hell, and so he gave me eternal life. So now I'm not going to judge people based upon the actions that I see, but I'm going to judge them based upon God's love. So I'm going to say, we're all dead, so... Yeah, so he's a homosexual. He can still be saved. So he's a drunk. He can still be saved. Because the love of Christ saved me as a sinner. No merits in myself to have eternal life. Therefore, he can save anybody. If God could save me, he can save anybody. I'm just as dead in my trespasses and sins just as the other person. The other person, it may be more obvious that they're dead in their trespasses and sins. Uh, you know, you look at the Mormons, you understand that. They, they look pretty clean. The Mormon missionaries came to my house, they look pretty good compared to the rest of the world. But apart from Christ, they're just as dead in their trespasses and sins as the non-Mormons. So you just judge people by uh, who they are in Christ. It's since Christ died for all, then we're all dead. So I'm not going to judge them based upon the flesh. I'm going to judge based on the Spirit. So the way you do it is you look at the love of Christ. You say, God looked at me. And even though I had no good thing in me, no redeeming quality, he commended his love toward me and died for my sins. And so that other person out there that cut me off on the freeway or that neighbor that's constantly bothering me about that tree that's hanging over the fence, God loves them as well, just as much as he loved me. I'm no better than that other person. And so I'm going to judge them based upon the spiritual, not the physical. It's all about the love of Christ constraining us. That's how we judge, based on Christ's love, not upon any fleshly merit. Okay. And, uh, and that's hard to do, especially if, you, if you're in a legalistic religion all those years, like you were and like I was, a different one, but still legalistic. Uh, it's hard not to judge on the flesh because you're conditioned to do that. You know, the Mormon is... It wasn't only legalistic religion, but it's also the same, you know, churchianity. <laughs> I've had both. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, yeah, it's it's harder like, when you're in good. legalism. But uh, yeah, it's just looking at the love of Christ. How does how does God look at that person? God says that's somebody I could save from their sins, and they can dwell with me forever in heaven. And regardless of how bad they look, that's how God looks at them. And so that's how we're supposed to look at them. The love of Christ constrains us to look at them that way. Okay, even Joe Biden. Yes, that'll be my greatest challenge. E even Joe Biden. Yep. Well, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, brother. God can save Joe Biden just as much as others now. I, I agree. That's but, uh, I, mean, I think about that. But I mean, I'll, I'll ask myself questions like, okay, where have I been any different than any of those people in Washington? I haven't been. It's just that they're just in a greater level of power and a position, so they're they're going to be tempted with things that we have no idea that they're tempted with. Right. Yeah, it goes back to that, uh, the money and power. You know, that's for churchianity, but that's also for politicians. That's for people that have done well in the world system. It's money and power. And so they have more to give up. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 19, it is impossible for the rich man, uh, you know, to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, of course, that's a little different. They had to sell their possessions. But it's still, it's a lot harder for Joe Biden to be saved than it is for me to be saved. Because he's got to give up a lot more stuff. But it could happen. I mean, look at Paul. He profited in the Jews' religion above many his equals. Um, he was, Paul was a rich man. And it was all based upon the power and money of churchianity, his religion. And he says, I count all things but dumb that I may win Christ. So Joe Biden can do it too. And those politicians in, in Washington can. It's, it's going to be harder for them because they've got a lot more to lose than me or you do. But, uh, but it still can be done. If, if God can save Paul, God can save Joe Biden. Yeah, and they always, it's its really weird because they, well, it's always a common scenario. Like like folks in those positions, they always, they always identify with like, you know, hey, I've been a, I've been part of the Catholic system or whatever, and that's, that's as far as you ever see it go. Yeah. You know, but I was, um, another thing I thought about was, um, has the world, the world has hit 8 billion people by now, or is it still between 7 and 8? I don't know exactly. I think we're pretty close to eight. I don't think we've hit it yet. Yeah. I think I was just I know. rounding, but I think we're pretty close. I don't think we've hit it. I remember like 20 years ago or so, it's when the world hit seven billion. So it was, but I, I, I think about stuff like that. I'm like, okay, of all of these folks and all, all that, that many people. And, and then of course, times past to now to ages to come. Of all the billions and billions, it's like, and all, if Christ died for all, then all, all were dead, and he died for all of those sins, it's, it's like, and that many sins from that many billions upon billions of people, it's like, it literally is an infinite number, and Christ literally yeah. paid for every one of those sins. Yeah. It's, that's, a, that's, that's boggles my mind, something terrible. I'm like, well. Yeah. It shows how much love and righteousness conquer evil yeah. and death. Yeah. Yeah, so. yeah the unlimited power, uh, you know, when God, we know He, you know, people say, well, He's all-present, He's also omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. Mm -hmm. That's the true display of God's power, yeah. that the blood of Christ could save a hundred billion people if they so choose to believe the gospel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the scripture comes to mind that where sin abounded, grace abounded much more, and that's that shows you how much more His grace can go deeper than all that many sins. It's yeah. it's mind-boggling when you really start really trying to pick it apart and think about it. Yes, it <laughs> is absolutely. But it's true. It's, it's awesome. It's the truth. Yeah. So. Yeah, it shows how great God's love is. Yeah, I like that yeah. uh, third verse of the love of God. If we with ink the ocean fill, and were the skies of parchment made. Where every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade. To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Yeah. Or could the scroll contain the whole they'll stretch from sky to sky? Amazing. No one like it. Yeah. And that apparently, that's the greatest lyric, I think, of a, of a hymn. And it was pre apparently written on the wall of an insane asylum. Someone who's considered crazy wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So. Wow. 
Okay. Um, all right. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, James. Appreciate it. All right. Uh, anybody have anything else before I go to Jerry? All right, Jerry, go ahead. Okay, so James brought up the, the uh, amount of people on planet Earth, 7 billion, 8 billion. I, I asked my telephone, and it, they got a, they have a uh, world, W-O-R-L-D, O-meter. And I'm looking at it now, and it's counting the births of the human beings, that's it's eight billion, sixteen million, four hundred five thousand five hundred six and counting. And wow. it uh, lists births. It lists births today, the deaths today, population growth today, etc. Et so that's right there on your little cheap Samsung radio. I mean telephone. <laughs> so we just crossed eight billion, according to the internet. Yeah, world o meter. World o meter. It's, it's clicking off the births and the deaths and all that good stuff. Keep you updated. All right. The Holy Spirit is a very busy spirit. Yeah, that's right. He's got to convict the hearts of eight billion people. Yeah. <laughs> I tell, I mentioned people over the years that, of course, I imagine a lot of companies don't do that anymore. But some of y'all may have. You uh, work for a factory, Connie did. I imagine. Uh, you punch in a card and you punch out. Mm -hmm. And you punch in a clock and you move your card to this side and you reverse it in the afternoon and you went home. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit punched in. I know one place he punched in at Acts 2 4. He's been on earth for, you know, working, but that Acts 2 4 was a punch in. Right. And he hasn't punched out yet and uh, he <laughs> won't for quite a while, but um, it, it's interesting, but just a great. Uh, Lesson and great Q and A. Uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Excellent, excellent questions and comments as always. So, uh, thanks everybody for joining us uh, tomorrow night. I know there was some discussion after I left about the Jesus path to the cross. Uh, so I'm going to cover that tomorrow night. Go into detail on that. Hopefully that'll that'll help. So uh, hope you can join us tomorrow night. So uh, have a good day, everybody, and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Glad to see.